What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the circus that is Chelsea Football Club. I thought my content was done for today, but clearly Chelsea thought otherwise. Mudrick. Mikhailo Mudrick. I think I pronounced his first name correct. I didn't expect us to pull this off this quickly. But shit, when Bowley wants someone, I guess he's going to get someone. And here we are, isn't it? Here we are. Um, Chelsea have agreed, uh, reached an agreement with Shakhtar Donetsk. For Mikhailo Mudrik, a fixed fee of 70 million euros, which is 62 million pounds, and a further 40 million euros, uh, 35 million in add ons. So that's just under 100 million. It's around the 95 million mark. Seven year contract agreed. We've swiped another Arsenal target, people. Two in one window. If it means anything towards the title race, I'm going to take that as a personal W already. But we're going to delve into all of this. We're going to delve into uh, Maduke as well. I think I pronounced that one correct. Yes, we're going to get into him. And we're also going to talk about the Crystal Palace versus Chelsea game just to round up the stream before we head out. Big up everyone that's locked in. As always, hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. Let me know you guys' thoughts on the signing of Mudrick down in the description below. We went from the board was travelling to Turkey to negotiate to we've already got a here we go. Um, f we've got, what's his name? David Ornstein's already reported it, so we know it's happening. Fabrizio's reported it as well. Both of them have hit the tap in. And yeah, we've, we've gone in for Mudrick. I'm very surprised we've done this because the first thing that came into my head was, seriously, we're not going for Enzo when we have that sort of money. But I guess it has something to do with them wanting 120 million up front. Whereas with Mudrick, we can kind of negotiate for add-ons or for the money to be paid in installments, which makes it a lot more easier for us year in and year out. Um, I'm surprised. I'm also surprised by Mudrick. Again, like you could have gone to, to Arsenal. You could have gone to a title challenge. You could have gone to a team in a much better shape and you chose the trenches. Just like Joe Felix. But hey, welcome to the trenches, my friend. And to Arsenal, hold that. You lot still ain't got no pull. Biggest club in Arsenal, biggest club in London, my back foot, bruv. You lot couldn't attract Felix. You lot couldn't attract Mudrick. You lot are doing well this season. But you lot need some trophies. You lot need some pedigree into that club before you lot can hang with the big boys. Because as soon as Chelsea come round... People's heads start turning. And you know what? I like this. We're actually flexing our muscles in the window a little bit. We are pissing off every single club in England. They're all vexed. Hide your targets. Get your targets in immediately. Because Todd Bowley's around. Todd Bowley is around and he's not hiding. He ain't going anywhere. He's slapping the peas on the table. And he's taking everything that he wants. In terms of the transfer, like... He probably like Felix. He's gonna walk straight into our lineup and look miles better than any forward that we have. So that might be something a little bit exciting to look forward to. Who knows? Maybe we will get him in time for the Palace game. Probably not. Probably not. But a man can dream because I'm not looking forward to that shitter tomorrow. But there's something to look forward to. There's a glimmer of hope again beaming down on Stamford Bridge. I don't know how long it's going to take before the footballing gods snatch it out of our grasp again, but enjoy it while it lasts. We have one of the most explosive young wingers in world football. Right-footed, he's dynamic, fearless on the ball in 1v1 situations, which you know is exactly what we've been lacking in. He's great at controlling the ball at pace as well, which is a very big attribute that you need to have when you're as fast as Mudrick is. Because you can either be a Timo Werner just kicking the ball and running, or you can be running with technique, like a little Eden Hazard. But obviously, we're not making the comparisons immediately. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Be the first Mudrick. Don't be the next Hazard. Don't do that. But it's exciting. He's not really the best playmaker or anything, but he's probably better than the playmakers we have right now. So who are we to turn our noses up at it? I'm just excited. I look forward to it. He's probably going to start um, in the, what's it called? The Liverpool game. Liverpool away on a 12.30 suddenly got a lot more interesting. Glad I didn't sell my ticket for that one. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing how Mudrick performs at Chelsea. Welcome to the trenches. It's not really nice here. You get fuck all service and everything's just toxic. 
but welcome and you know what things might get a little bit better with you in here um we're all selling to maduke but maybe this probably isn't going to happen now because I, I don't think we're going to go in for a third forward while completely ignoring our midfield but we will see we will see we are linked with Maduke. Um, we're in direct contact with PSV for the mid for the winger. I do like him. I think he's got great physical strength for a, a dribbler as fast as he is. Great at 1v1 decision making as well. Bit concerned about his injury record though. So I, I, I don't know. I can't jump to conclusions on that one. But looks good. Looks good. I just don't know if we go for him now with... Uh, Mudrick coming through the door, but we have to wait and see. Chelsea are literally the most unpredictable club in world football right now. Um, what else? Palace versus Chelsea. Oh, well, uh, there goes the positivity. There goes the positivity. Right. Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. 10th versus 12th. Three points separate us, but Palace cannot go above Chelsea unless they beat us 9 0. And I know we're shit, but we ain't that shit. So, yeah. God knows what's going to happen in this game. We've beaten Palace in our last 11 meetings, but that don't mean nothing because we're not Chelsea FC anymore. Fulham, Broadway FC, until we have some self-respect and some dignity for us as a football club. Um, Vieira's side hasn't been too good away from home. They've only picked up nine points from eight, but they've won two of their last three against West Ham United and Bournemouth. So they'll feel a little bit more optimistic away from home. Um, our form is a bit similar. Palace have two wins and four losses. Chelsea have one win, one draw, and four losses. And they've got barely anybody out. While Chelsea have James, Fafana, Kante, Brozier, Felix, Chilwell, Sterling, Mendy, Pulisic, Zakaria, and Loftus-Cheek all out. It's not looking good, bruv. It's not looking good. But, hey, we could still get something. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how at all, because I have no answers for you. But we could actually still get something from this game. Um, I'm going to go for a 4-2-3-1 for my lineup. Um, I had it up on the screen here. It's the same lineup that we went through on the stream, but that's the lineup I would like, except one change, one change. So I'm going to go for Kepa in goal because there's literally nobody else. Lonina played an under-21s game and, and Mendy's injured, but even if he was fit, I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that. We're going to go for a back four. I'm still going to keep Aspi at right back because there's just no other options. So we're going to go Aspi. And I think Chalaba's form dipped in the last game against Fulham. So I don't want to keep um, letting it drop by putting him out of position on the right. So I'm going to put Aspi there. But I'm going to keep Chalaba in the team. I'm going to have him in centre back with Thiago Silva because that's our best pairing right now. Koulibaly needs some time on the bench. He's just not been good enough. Not been good enough at all. So, Koulibaly can ride bench. We're going to have Kukurella on the left. We're going to have Jovacic as our DMs. Because there literally isn't anybody else left. Um, Chakumeka, I'm throwing in the middle. I'm throwing Chakumeka in the middle. And it might be a bit controversial. But I'm putting Obra on the left. Just because I need Havertz and Mount to ride bench. I need them to ride bench. They just haven't been good enough. And I think Havertz isn't even that bad off the bench. So, I would rather us do that. But yeah, Obra off the left. I'm going to put Gallagher or Ziyech, isn't it? Ziyech on the right. And I'm going to put Fafana up top. Just because why not? Give him a run out. He can't be any worse than what we already have to deal with. So it is what it is. But yeah, that's my lineup. I'm not going to say a scoreline because I have zero faith or optimism or anything like that. But big up everybody that's locked in anyway, though. Like and subscribe. It's been good chatting. And yeah. Mudrick is blue. Up the Chels and big up.